the Jag I-Pace EV400. EV400 stands for 400 horsepower. This is it plugged in. And as you can see, this is an all-electric Jag. And yours truly videoing. An attractive looking vehicle. We'll go through it in a bit more detail shortly. But this is a quick intro into the world of electric motoring. It's coming to a car near you soon. And it is exciting. Right, as promised, here we go. This is obviously the front of the car. You have seen that. Behind there we have some wood that I'm busy planing for a project of mine. Planing is a lot of fun, but not as much fun as driving the car, I have to say. Let's just jump in and get into the driver's side of things rapidly so we can just dispatch with all this stuff as fast as we can. As we expect, digital everything. I have 36% and 125 kilometers of range, which is interesting. When I left the charging station 17 k's ago, I had 117 k's, so it's gone up in range. So I think it takes a little while just to adjust the extra amount of battery you've put into the car when you when you charge it. Later on, or earlier on in this video, depending on where I insert the segment, you will see that we chat quite a bit about EV ownership and why range anxiety only exists for those who haven't driven an electric vehicle. That'll be something interesting. Menus on this car are outstanding. Honestly, I think everybody should just copy them because they're beautiful. Intuitive, simple to simple to navigate, anything you want, easily found. This, the coolest thing in the world. I'm just going to turn the car on. It's going to bong. That's the only bong you really get from the car, which is nice. If you push it, there's your seat coolers and your seat warmers. So you decide what you want and if you just push it again you can adjust your temperature which of course it's not doing for me right now because i haven't turned it on completely but intuitive nice great easy to use gear selection you go forward you go nowhere you go backward you park very simple very easy haven't figured out what that switch is for yet we'll get back to you mode eco normal sport up and down on those two uh, traction control off. I don't recommend you play with that too much. And here's where you adjust the right height on the car. You can actually adjust it up. So clear obstacles, normal mode there. And you've got a creep mode where you can crawl underneath low things. Can't really see that adding a hell of a lot, but there it is. The other thing that the car's got for it is, on the hint side of things, a Meridian sound system. We've talked about Meridian before. On the road, lovely. Actually, a really, really, really good quality sound system I have to say. Um, we'll get into a review on that maybe at some stage. The rear view mirror here is interesting. So if you look through it, I don't know if you could see through the wood, through the small windscreen to the immaculate, fabulous woodworking that I'm doing. Um, but if you pull this button, it actually turns it into a camera. And now you can see everything, which is very cool. Then panoramic sunroof I've mentioned on the road. Let's just have a look at the back of the car. Back seats are huge. Oh, the ubiquitous farmer's hat. That's mine. And this time it's not even Alan's. But a lot of room in here. Red and black interior. Well, you like it, you don't like it. For me, not, not my first choice, but it really doesn't matter. Look at the seats. Those front seats are beautiful. They are fully adjustable. You can have the bolsters move in and out. And clamp you into place when you're driving along naturally me being such a skinny thin person it doesn't really type me too much but uh, i think for larger folk um, it will make you sit in that car and squeeze you into the seat yeah powered tailgate leads to the glaring bitter disappointment that is the spare wheel Really about the only fault I can have on this car is that if you really want to go away when you need the spare wheel, guess what? You have to buy a roof rack or get a tow hitch. Oh, ah. Um, so yeah, pays your money, takes your choices. But uh, underneath here is where all that delicious battery sits. And one spare wheel for an extra 100 kilometers of range. Do you know what? I'll live with the spare wheel as it is. Thank you very much done. Powered tailgate and I have to say from the rear the car looks great. It really 
it has this flare of aggression to it that's not overly in your face it's subtle but it's there and i think the looks on the car are are very appealing indeed i enjoyed it obviously we have the little pull out door handles and up front yeah the, the mag wheels are are, are are nice they're black they suit the car the, the obviously the little red jag insert stands out the brakes are massive funny enough you know what's what, what the amazing thing about this car is you can turn it into one pedal driver and when you're doing one pedal driving all your regen is doing all your braking so if you drive this car with any modicum of sensibility whatsoever i don't think you're ever going to have to change the brake pads front of the car is aggressive and as you can see quite low and then completely flat underneath when you get underneath it um, if you should ever want to do so I did mention we're going to open up the frunk. Let me just jump inside here. You can open up from the key fob, but that's in my pocket right now. And we'll just pop that open. It is, shall we say, mechanical in nature. Um, you'll hear it when we close it. But if we open the sucker up. We have gas struts. Yay! So it's nice and easy to open. And then you've got your chargers here. So this is the slow charger. That's the emergency charger the yellow cable with its uh, little power supply so to if you're really in desperate trouble you can plug it into a into a, a normal power socket and trickle some electricity into the into the car to get you to where you can charge it up but as we discussed earlier these are issues that really if you ever need to open this it's going to be in a once in a blue moon and only because something has gone horribly wrong with your charging situation at home as i say range anxiety a thing that non-EV owners suffer from. When I said mechanical, this is the mechanical I mean. You can see why it's mechanical. Look at this. Blah. Proper over-engineered big, big clips and, and things here. And listen to this when it closes, if you can hear it on the video. Well, proper. And even that didn't get it closed properly. So let's give it another thunk. There we go. Now you know it's closed. And that, in a nutshell, as they say in the classics, is that. Let's get it on the road. <laughs> I love this car! Holy moly, if this is the future of the electric, I've said it before, but this is the first proper full electric with, with total grunt that I've driven. I am, of course, in the new Jaguar I-Pace something something 400 i don't know what the 400 stands for 400 tons of fun it's outrageous outrageous and i am if i wasn't sold in the electric vehicles before which i was i am now this is just the most amazing machine and it's all about that acceleration and there's nothing that any petrol powered engine can possibly shake a stick at when it comes to electric motors and just out and out acceleration and I'm an acceleration guy. Handling, yes, fine. Braking, yes, fine. Going around corners with all your tires screaming doesn't particularly appeal to me. But to put my foot down and just obliterate whatever it is that's near me and see them as a vanishing tiny little speck in my, in my rear view mirror is something that I really enjoy. And I tell you, Jag claimed this thing will outdrag a GT3. I think it probably will. And in fact, my mate has got an Alfa Giulia QV, the big one with a Ferrari engine in. I'm going to take him for a drive in this and just see how he holds his manhood cheap after being <laughs> seated in that seat when I floor this thing. And it, the shove is just unreal and relentless and it doesn't stop. You know, you hit 120 in, in, in no time flat, so you kind of have to slow down then. I must say, compared to the Volvo Electric, which I drove a little while ago, the regenerative braking on this is kind of, you can do one pedal driving, it's not as aggressive as the Volvo, so you, you, you need to fettle it a little bit, because whereas the Volvo will enthuse about bringing you to a full stop, the, the, the Jag will slow you down, and then when you're below sort of 10 k's an hour or so, it seems to let off and let you, and let you, and let you coast. So you do actually occasionally have to move your foot 
over from the accelerator the fun pedal the loud pedal in fact not so loud but the, the really go like hell pedal uh, over to the brake every now and then on the car other than that i have to say 2.2 million rand buys you a lot of toys the jag obviously comes as most electric cars do these days at that price level spec with everything uh, i've got a fully digital display everything here i've got vented seats and i can tell you that in town now in Sasselburg which is where I am I've just come to see my little project and see the progress that's been going on there the temperature outside is 33 degrees Celsius and these cooled vented seats are wonderful wonderful they really are fantastic uh, what else can I say about the car um, ride quality is great it feels heavy obviously it is heavy it's got a ton of batteries in it this panoramic sunroof I've never seen a sunroof as big as this and I've seen some big sunroofs fairly recently in fact and it doesn't have a shade on it but it doesn't seem to need it because there doesn't seem to be a hell of a lot of sun coming through uh, it seems to be quite dark uh, which is which is which is which is kind of nice and yeah range anxiety shh, mange anxiety I know Alan rushed around like a headless chicken trying to get this thing charged I picked that up with a full charge this morning I said to Jag, I'll be bringing it back this afternoon for a full charge. They just looked at me and laughed. Ha ha ha. Okay, so I didn't know it, but apparently my camera has a thermal cutout on it. I was alluding to the temperature of being 33 degrees. It's now gone up to 34 degrees. My camera decided to overheat and it shut itself down. So I was talking to myself for some time there whilst uh, I ranting on about how Helen ran around trying to get me a full charge etc 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 so anyway I've had a full charge I've taken it to Sasselberg I'm on the way back um, and I have to say on the open road the thing cruises like a normal car it has about the same amount of noise funnily enough because when you're on the open road the road noise generally exceeds that in the engine um, I swear I could hear that when one's driving there's some sort of noise coming from the transmission or from the maybe the motor um, that tells you you're going fast, but uh, if you have to listen to that to be told you're going fast aside from that relentless shove pushing you into the back of these actually very comfortable but proper bucket almost racing type seats Something's wrong So the car itself One now drives without a rev counter and it's just continuous It's about 391 kilometers when fully charged um, I drove it out of the charging station at the workshop at uh, Jaguar Land Rover Waterford and it had dropped out to 380 so I lost 11 k's in about 200 meters which is all right um, and since then I've been can you do in a car like this you have to hit it sometimes so I've been testing the acceleration a little bit and then on the open road I've been driving it properly and I have to say the range is probably going to get me close to 340 k's out of the indicated 340 k's it had when it told me when I reset the trip meter when I could figure out how to do that so I think the range is going to be reasonably accurate but you can't drive it like a hooligan you have to drive it carefully and Oh, it does make it very easy to do that you know it's got it's got every aid possible under the sun to help you maximize your, your range and reduce your range anxiety um, but on the topic of, 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 of that the interface jag has got going with the user and the electronics behind here is is first rate it's it's second to none everything is here everything is intuitive it's easy to find things there are no annoying bongs all the time it's sensible but other little thought that just struck me whilst I was driving in this car is kind of like right when I need to charge it up in about 163 k's time maybe a little bit earlier than that so you can actually dot that out which is completely what is that gonna cost me I don't know but let's just say it's a thousand rand do you know what makes me happy about that? Is that out of that thousand rand, not one cent, 300 rand or more of it, is going to the government as tax. 
It's all going into my electricity bill and mine going forward. So, by actually driving electric cars, you're going to starve the government of tax, which is a good thing considering what they do with it. But this car makes me happy. So let's have some warm and happy thoughts as we approach the toll gate. Ugh. Right, in one of my earlier videos I said, I don't know what that button does. It's ASPC. Do you know what that is? It's basically cruise control for when you're off-road. Whilst I'm sitting in the traffic and I've been playing a couple of my tunes, let's just briefly talk about this Meridian sound system. I have to say, you know, it's a high-end brand. I'm expecting good things from it. This is a 2.2 million Rand car. I'm expecting a good sound system and certainly I've got that with the Meridian. As with all my cars, it's set to absolute neutral. The sound stage is balanced to the center of the car and it executes against that brilliantly. There's no shortcuts on this particular system whatsoever. The sound is well thought about, it's well balanced, it's not quite a party, a party vibe, in other words, bias to the bass and and, and, and thump and tunes, but if you have a bass heavy track, it'll reproduce that for you quite happily. And the sound is engaging, it's believable, it's smooth, to use a, a, a generic expression, which my former editor would roll over in his grave if you heard me using it, but that's what it is. And it's enjoyable, it's inherently musical, you can just listen to your music and enjoy it. And for me, that's the hallmark of a, of, of, of a sound system. You know, I've always said, if it's, if it's too loud, you're too old. Um, and if, it's, if it hurts your ears, it's probably either too loud and a really, really, really good sound system and it's just the sound pressure levels imploding your head, or it's distorting and that's what's causing your ears to become irritated. I get none of that from the system and it does play exceptionally loud as far as high-end systems go. So Meridian, Kudos, can't fault it. Morning sunshines. Okay, so this little clip is me driving in traffic. I have set cruise control on and I have got lane control on and in theory the car should be able to then drive itself whilst I do important things like talk to you. And at the moment I have my hands on the steering wheel because I'm just not quite that sure this thing's gonna stop in time. Stop, stop, stop stopped isn't that marvelous and given that the traffic on the highway is at an absolute standstill I'm curious to see how far it's going to let me go before it says put your hands back on the steering wheel behave I'm not driving the car entirely for you let's see some time has passed we're still stationary oh we've moved forward and we're still moving forward and it's steering itself back into the middle of the lane gathering speed now oh now it tells me keep my hands on the wheel i don't know what will happen if i don't keep my hands on the wheel it's something i'd like to try one day when i'm feeling braver okay so one of the not so nice things about this flipping awesome jag is 48 hours and 49 minutes to fully charge it on a home plug. That's a 15 kilowatt charger, I suppose. And let's see how long it takes to add a kilometer of range. Oh, it just went up one, 74 to 75. Oh, well, that's a good start. So I'll let it just uh, do its thing. And in fact, it's a good opportunity for it to now just to do its update on its software that it has now downloaded and that is ready. So let's see how that all goes. Summing up the Jag is actually quite easy. This is an electric high performance SUV at 2.2 million Rand. This kind of performance is going to be very hard to achieve in anything that's internal combustion engine or ice oriented. And as our obsession or our ignorance of range anxiety subsides, I think that the future of cars is right here. We're looking at it and it's electric. And as more and more of us switch over to the benefits of electric, the future 
classic car might just be a Jag EV 400. Put that in your noodle, bake it over for a couple of minutes. This is Will Ledford Kelly signing off.